fellow unionists, I may not be everyone's cup of tea, but I want to address the unionist people of Northern Ireland. No matter which party you vote for within the unionist families, the one thing that surely unites us is our love for and our determination to preserve the union between Northern Ireland and Great Britain. And it's about that that I want to talk to you. Never in my lifetime do I believe the union has been in such peril. That is because of the iniquitous EU protocol that has been put upon us. Make no mistake about it. This is not just about economics. This is about politically transitioning Northern Ireland out of the United Kingdom and into an all Ireland. Consider what the protocol does. It takes this part of the United Kingdom and alone abandons it to the EU single market, foreign single market, to a foreign customs union, to a foreign VAT regime, subject to foreign laws that we don't make and can't change, all of which to be litigated before a foreign court. That is so antithetical to the union that it means our integral, our position as an integral part of the United Kingdom is being dismantled before our very eyes. The Irish seaboard is the physical manifestation of that. And of course, it exists to detach Northern Ireland. It partitions the United Kingdom. And its sole purpose is to wean us off our reliance on an attachment to the economic systems of the United Kingdom and to transition us into an all-Ireland alignment. Just last week, an EU official said, if the people of Northern Ireland can't source their goods from GB, then they need to source them from the island of Ireland. What was that about? That was about driving home what the motivation is. It is to make Northern Ireland an integral part of an all-island economy, instead of an integral part of this United Kingdom. And of course, it doesn't end there because it is a short step, and such is the thesis of the EU, it's a short step from economic to political union. Consider the EU itself. Its founding principle in its very first treaty was to build towards ever closer union. How was it to do that? Through ever closer economic unity, knowing that it is indeed a short step from economic unity to political union. And that is the evil genius of the protocol as far as Northern Ireland is concerned. It is to disengage us from our natural hinterland and natural affinity of being part of the United Kingdom and to turn us towards the EU and the Republic of Ireland knowing that once that beds in, then there is no going back on that path that is set. And that is why I say to you that the EU protocol is the most iniquitous, perilous threat to the union that I have seen in my lifetime. So what do we as unions, whatever your party of preference is, what can and should we do about it? Some might say, oh, with a government, with a huge majority, what can we do? Well, that's what they would like you to say. But there are things we can do. I'm no great fan of Stormont. I think you know that. But within these institutions, there is some semblance of power for unionism. 
which if used strategically, politically, can create the circumstances where the operation of the protocol becomes so uncomfortable for those who put it upon us that they will be driven to look again. And of course the mechanism exists in Article 16 of the Withdrawal Agreement. If there's such social and political and other upset by the protocol, then it must be examined again. So we need to create that. How do we create that? Well, let's look at three things. I believe, as unions, we should be doing legally and lawfully. I'm not talking about street protests. I'm not talking about violence. I'm talking about using such political leverage as we have. Take the Belfast Agreement. We were told it was built on maintaining an equilibrium between North-South and East-West relations. And that was to underpin the whole idea of the Stormont institutions. Well, of course, what the protocol has done is it has smashed that equilibrium by trashing the East-West lines, by putting a border in the Irish Sea. And yet we are expected to continue to operate the North-South relations as if nothing had happened to aid the process. Well, as unions, surely we should be fighting back and we should be fighting back to say, we as unionists, and I'm speaking of those who have the power in the Northern Ireland Executive, who day and daily operate the North-South institutions, they should be saying, until the protocol is revisited, we are freezing involvement in the North-South. We are not participating in the North-South Ministerial Council. We are not operating the North-South institutions. Because we're not going to sit back and let you trash the East-West that matters most to us and meekly operate the North South. So we have political leverage. The question is, is there the political will to use it? That's the first suggestion I made. The second is this. Stormont as an assembly from time to time is required or asked to implement various EU directives. We should refuse to do that. We had a golden opportunity on the 8th of December when a proposal to implement 45, no less, EU regulations and directives was brought before the Assembly, brought in the name of Mr. Putz, the Agriculture Minister. And the Assembly here though I warned them of what they were doing, meekly, limply, voted it through by 81 votes to two, the two being Jim Wells and myself. Now, what did that do? Well, you saw this week what that did. Because one of those EU directives that it brought in was one governing plants, which means that you cannot bring into Northern Ireland garden centres, supplies from GB, because there might be soil on the pots. Because under a crazy EU directive, British soil is now banned from being brought to a part of the United Kingdom. That was something we self-inflicted on ourselves back in December. And of course it illustrates the core absurdity and offence of the protocol, that GB is now treated as a foreign country. In EU parlance, it's a third country, like Brazil or Bolivia or anywhere else outside the EU. And so trading with this third country, the other nations of the United Kingdom, is ostracised to the same level of trading with foreign countries. And that is why we have all these inhibitions on our trade. So I say the second thing that can be done is the Assembly should grow a backbone. It should stand up to these issues. Unionists should refuse to allow any more implementing regulations to be brought to the floor of the Assembly.
The third thing that should be done, the RDC border, tragically, has been built under the guidance of a Stormont Department, DERA. The DERA minister henceforth should instruct his officials to cease cooperating and manning this border that partitions the United Kingdom. By those acts, by refusing to operate the north-south bodies, by refusing to bring implementing regulations for EU laws, by refusing to implement and man the border, we can bring the protocol issue to a political head. We can force the powers that be to recognise that there's a price too big to be paid for the implementation of the protocol. And therefore, we can insist and give them the opportunity to activate Article 16 with you. That is the only path out of this. It's not about making the best of it. There is no upside to the protocol. There is no best of both worlds in a emasculating the East-West relationships, in excluding Northern Ireland from its natural hinterland. If this protocol is allowed to bed in, if unionist ministers help bed it in, then it is never going to do anything but deliver its ultimate objective of an all Ireland. That's how serious this is. So whatever you think of me, forget the messenger. Think of the message. And I say to you, we need as unions to band together with a determination to unstitch this wicked protocol. We need to use the political means at our disposal. We need to stop being rollover unions. We need to stand up. And I for one, and you can decide for yourself, I would rather try and fail than to never try. But I believe if we go about this thing with that spirit, then we can succeed because it is unconscionable that the Union of Great Britain and Northern Ireland should be so undermined, so dissipated, that we should be so detached without our consent that we need to demonstrably show that we do not consent by actions such as I have so I say to you, lobby your MLAs. Don't be put off by all sorts of palaver about, oh, we must do this, we can't do that. That's the talk of defeatism. It's down to whether or not we have the will. And if we have a will, then unionism is still strong enough to unstitch this wretched protocol. Let's do it. Let's do it. Together, I trust we at least will try. Good night. God bless.